Hello, monarchs of the internet! Today I'm going to show you how I made my very first scale mail dice bag and how you can make one of your own. And so I had to start with the colors, so I did end up going with black and silver just so it would match with any sort of dice. And I started with a lot of confidence in this project. I just want to preface this with the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing. Is that typical for all of your. I mean, colors? sometimes I sort of know what I'm doing. I'm totally winging it. <laughs> I have no plan. <laughs> um, anyway, so I started, as with any good chainmail project, opening and closing a ton of rings. Except I didn't actually do that, I guess I jumped the gun a little bit, because I wanted- I really didn't have a plan, but I kind of had an idea. So I was trying to see if it was going to work, so what I did was I took the, uh, small scales and I believe the, uh, small rings- I'll put what size they are, I forget. Um, all this is anodized aluminum. And I thought that I would string the small scales together just like I do with my uh, mini dragons. And except a much longer, long dragon. And if I connect them all together, all you need is two rings to connect them together. And then you layer them on top of each other, connecting two scales with one ring and going down and adding more scales and more scales as you go along. It's a bit like a European foreign one as well, except the scale is the closed um, ring instead of using an actual ring for your middle ring or your European foreign one. So, as you can see, the length is growing, and so I just had to keep making it longer and longer until I reached the desired length that I wanted for the height of my dice bag. Um, and as you can see, I try to give you some little more close-up shots. That's kind of have to, how you have to connect them together to layer them on top of one another, and that's how the finished piece sort of looks. And then after many, many, many hours later, I finally finished all of the beads beautiful uh, rose and then I could organize the rose. So the bottom there is what I was planning on being the bottom of the dice bag uh, where all of them converge in the middle but I had to weave all of the pieces together. So again, I'm kind of using the European 4-in-1 concept and I'm using some smaller and some larger rings for this. I actually ended up doing some smaller scales, uh, I mean some smaller rings toward the bottom, some larger rings toward the middle, and some smaller rings back at the top again to try and make that teardrop shape you can kind of see in the top right hand corner of the screen. Um, but I think it, it did end up being kind of like a teardrop shape, but I think it would have been better just to use large rings all throughout and not complicate it um, because it would be easier to get the dice in and out. I mean, it's still the end product still worked really nicely and it does have kind of a cool shape, but it um, just depends on what you want. So I connected two and two and two all together because I thought that would be easiest to make in the panels. Um, and then I had to make a middle piece to connect them all together. And I did that, sort of how I do my medium-sized dragon heads. I was kind of feeling my way through this, so I decided to make a small uh, ring. I have a big ring with a bunch of small rings, and that is supposed to be the bottom. And then I was going to try to connect, uh, make a connection pieces to all of the three um, things that you can see there. Um, to kind of extend the bottom of the pieces in that little head shape. So it's just, it's all it is is a European foreign one, just with some different size rings. Um, and I decided to put, make those, and then I can attach them, as you see here, to the bottom to kind of make a little extension. And once I made all three extensions for all three of the bottom pieces, um, and basically what I'm just doing there is just extending past uh, the bottom, just without a actual scale. Um, and there you can see that I'm connecting the two extensions together, and then I go up through the whole thing, and it's kind of almost like a, a weaving or like a zipper, um, and I just attach the two pieces fully together, starting from the bottom. And I still don't think that I had the little bottom piece attached to the very bottom yet. Um, but as you can see, all you have to do is weave it together and make like a big sheet of this stuff. And then again, I will weave the next part and make it into another sheet. And I actually decided to add one more row, uh, which I didn't show. I just thought that adding one more row would be nice. So here is the whole sheet all laid out from the back side. Um, and now what I have to do is attach the two sides together. 
um, which, as I recall, was slightly difficult to try and get all of the different rings all lined up perfectly how they were supposed to, um, but I did end up managing it. So uh, now what I did was I had this kind of um, a bag. I did actually have a bag and I had the bottom and I'll show you a better view of the bottom. There's some dice in there at the moment. But see, you can see how that ring that I made kind of attached itself to the bottom. And now all I had to do was finish off the top because a dice pack is no good if your dice all fall out of it. And I really have, I have seen some people do um, chain mail dice bags and then do like leather cords and that's all cool. But I thought it would be really awesome if we made one entirely out of chainmail. So I made that silver chain, as you can see there, and I just needed some end caps so that the chain wouldn't obviously slide through the rings that I put at the top. So I decided on rosettes, and rosettes are super easy to make. All you do is you kind of, you just put one ring, and then you link two rings together, and then you take another ring, and you put it through those two rings, and then you take another ring, and then you put it through those three rings. It's super easy to make. Um, but you can have lots of different looks with rosettes. So I was trying to decide how many rings I wanted in my rosettes. And then I'll use these rosettes to end off the chain so that the chain will not slide out of its holding. Um, and I did end up actually also adding a clasp to the chain as well. Um, though I didn't show that, it just worked out better. Um, there's the rosettes, and there's the rosette attached to one of the chains, so you can kind of see how it kind of will be a little end cap there. That's a small rosette that I made. I made a bigger one, uh, which I actually liked a little better. You can see both sizes in the final design. And here I'm just threading the chain through all of the large rings that I did put on there so that I could um, cinch it closed. And I think it actually worked pretty well. Again, I did end up adding a clasp to it because it would slide open. But here is the final design and I think that it looks really cool. Um, I think it's super awesome. Um, yes, the video looks a little weird because I played it in reverse. But I think that this is a cool design. I also think it's cool because you can kind of see the dice through the bag. So whatever color dice you have, um, you'll be able to see it. You can't see it as well in the camera, but it kind of creates a really nice effect. And uh, this took forever. I think this was about 12 hours. Uh, so uh, maybe not a first time project and I will never do it again, but really fun. There's a picture of a cat to end this all off. And thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I'm a new YouTuber and I would really appreciate it. Um, thanks, bye.